had a fantastic time traveling through Thailand. We spent a total of two and a half months and we kind of did a little taste of city life and a little taste of beach life. Yeah, and we're going to break down which life cost us more and how we went about it. So we spent a month and a week in Bang Bangkok and Chiang Mai combined and then we spent a month and a week in Koh Samui and in Phuket. And both had something very different to offer so you know we felt like i kind of felt like in one area we were spending more than the other but then when we started tallying up um yeah it was kind of interesting to see how it all broke down now the way that we're going to do it so we're not just tossing a bunch of numbers at you is we're first going to compare our time spending our city life we'll call it and that we started in bangkok yeah, and Bangkok was fantastic. We enjoyed it much more than we thought we would because it's the big city and that's usually what we kind of steer away from. But Bangkok, our rent in Bangkok was $380 and we were right in the middle of the Ari district, which was about a block from the uh, monorail system. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very centrally located for everything that we needed to do. Yeah, and it was a great introduction for us yeah. to Southeast Asia because it was <laughs> our first stop and we were totally prepared to be overwhelmed and we weren't. No, yeah. We, yeah, we weren't at all. The, the subway system, mm -hmm. the monorail system, everything was very easy to use. We were able to communicate with everybody, no problem. So the shock factor that we thought we were gonna have <laughs> simply wasn't there. No. Yeah, that was a great time and that was one week in Bangkok. And then we moved to and we flew to Chiang Mai. And in Chiang Mai, we had a fantastic place. We stayed in a neighborhood called the Niman District. Uh, it is kind of your, I don't know, maybe a little more upscale or just more yeah. modern neighborhood with your malls and Yeah, a little more nomadic. Like a lot, a lot yeah. of, uh, um, what are they called, workspace mm -hmm. uh, places that you can, you can you do work for right, from home. A lot of cafes, stuff yeah. like that. Um, and our place there for one month was $658, which we thought was a great price. Yeah, for what we had. Mm -hmm. We had a rooftop was, pool. It was a great price. Yeah, yeah. And, and really it was so central to everything that you needed. You could just walk out your door, restaurants, seriously, like right out the door, and then also massages and the mall and just kind of anything you need. Yeah, your smoothies. <laughs> I did. I had my smoothie stand just right there, so that was really nice. I like them. Yeah, two a day is quite excessive. <laughs> I did but, not get two a day. <laughs> now our next category is going to be our grocery bill. Now our grocery bill and all throughout Thailand was a lot less expensive than it would have been anywhere else in the world, obviously, because you're eating street food. And you're also eating at 7-Eleven. You're getting your 7-Eleven <laughs> fix. Yeah. And you might laugh at that, and so would have we until we started doing it. 7-Eleven <laughs> has some of the best ramens and snacky foods you can shake a stick well, at. And not even, not even just like your basic ramens. Yeah. They have curry and rice that tastes yeah. just as good as what we were getting at home, and we're tossing it in the microwave and cooking it. So we definitely enjoyed that. We definitely enjoyed it when we needed to, mm -hmm. and we needed to to the extent of about $44. Yeah in Bangkok yeah and that's that in one week so one that's week. extensive yeah that's and, and in our grocery bill is also um, anything that we buy for household so yeah. especially when we're staying a place for a month we do need to buy like laundry detergent things right. like that or whatever so anything we buy at the grocery store Brian's beers my snacks those are in our grocery budget correct now in Chiang Mai obviously with that said we spent a little bit more because we were there for an entire month and we spent $140 on groceries in Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai had some actually a really nice big grocery store um, so anything you needed and that was actually really nice. We thought maybe we'd prepare meals but I will say this one thing we quickly realized and we kind of knew coming in as well is you pay more to prepare your meals at home than what you're going to pay to go out and eat so yeah and it's also more work to prepare your meals at mm -hmm. home and you might think it's kind of a hassle to go out every day and, and get something to eat but literally there are restaurants right down at the bottom of our elevator yeah so it wasn't a problem at all we just run it down really get some food and come right back up yeah now the next category is transportation costs and this one just really varies by the location that we're in um we typically use transportation obviously to get around we don't rent cars we're not renting scooters while we are here and no. that might be something that you do we just made the good decision even before coming in that wasn't something we were going to do right. so in now, bangkok now in bangkok 
Bangkok, we do walk just mm -hmm. about everywhere, but Bangkok is a huge city. So to get to those uh, touristy spots that we wanted to get to, uh, we learned how to take the uh, subway system and the uh, sky train. Mm -hmm. And we only spent, it was, it was very inexpensive for as much moving around as we did. It ended up being $28. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that included our grab as well, going back yeah. and forth from the airport. So we did use that. You can use the sky train to do that. We just find that when you're trying to get to a flight and stuff like that, try, the last thing we want yeah. to do is take our luggage onto the subway system. We saw plenty of people doing it though, so it's a very common way of transportation from the airport. Now in Chiang Mai, um, the way that we got around, we did use Grab and we um, found the Grab to be so incredibly affordable in really both Bangkok and yeah. in Chiang Mai. Um, and we used that to get back and forth from the airport. And then other than that, we used the red trucks. And the Chiang Mai red trucks are so easy to use. They are pretty well set on price. You might do a little negotiating if you're going somewhere further, like when we went up to the temple. But for the most part, it's kind of a flat rate of yeah. 30 baht per person to get just across town. So uh, that was really nice. And that just ran us $11 for the entire month, which is super cheap. Yeah, no, we did walk quite a bit, mm -hmm. but we had no problem jumping in those red trucks because we knew that it was a reasonably priced ride to get to where we wanted to go. Yeah. And if you haven't used those red trucks before, they're so easy to use. It can be a little intimidating yeah. going in because you're just flagging them down, but they will really, it was, they, when they know they're coming up behind you and you're walking, they just honk and they don't hassle you, but they just honk to see if you're going to need a ride. Just, yeah. just wave at them and they stop and you hop in the back. So really easy to use. Okay, our next category is our miscellaneous costs. Costs that we occur that you may not. Um, things we might buy, sunglasses, hats, dresses, anything that we pick up that it wouldn't be typical or that you may not. Mm -hmm. And our total costs for miscellaneous items in Bangkok came to zero dollars. <laughs> we didn't need anything in no. Bangkok. Now in Chiang Mai, we spent $71. Now that was for three massages for me, that was two massages for Brian, and a haircut. Yes, and that's a yeah. pretty good deal. I, I went and got a massage one day, finished my massage, walked across the street and got a haircut, grand total $22. Yeah. So I would say that's a pretty good deal. It is a great deal. Um, that was something we knew we wanted to take advantage of when we got into Southeast Asia because we had heard all about how affordable the massages are. Yeah. And honestly, $71 not even in counting the haircut into that would be one massage at home if that so that's why I don't that's get a pretty good deal <laughs> it's a pretty great deal our next expense is a phone data plan so getting a sim card one thing we have really learned trying to make things easier as time goes on for us is that sometimes you pay a little bit more but get your SIM card at the airport if yeah. you can. They are set up for it. The process is super fast. You have coverage then right when you leave the airport. So if you're getting a grab or if you need right. to contact your Airbnb host or anything like that, it really honestly is just saves time. It just is less stress. We've been stuck not doing it before and we regretted it. Yeah. So just do it at the airport. Right. And one of those places that we regretted it was actually in Bangkok and that's where we learned the lesson. So in Bangkok, we actually traveled into the mall area from our place, got there, forgot that we needed our passports, which you always need your passports. So, you know, just bring that with you. But anyways, we ended up getting our, our um, SIM cards at the mall and that was $54. And because it kind of went a few days forward into the time we were in Bangkok, mm -hmm. that then covered majority of the time that we were also in Chiang Mai right. as well. So we only had to get it the one time. So it was really $54 between the both of them, but we put it into Bangkok's budget. Okay, now island life. Now, this is kind of what you think about when you're coming to Thailand, so this might be what you're most interested in. That's why we saved it until the end. So our time in Koh Samui for rent was $740, and that included a weight room, a pool, um, everything that we needed in our place at Replay. Yeah, and it was a great condo. I wouldn't say we we very much kind of have mixed feelings of recommending it to people because we recommend it very much if you're staying there for a longer stretch of time uh, and if you have a car. It had all the amenities we needed, but the one thing it was very much lacking is because we didn't have transportation. It was a little hard to get around. So uh, 
just want to throw that out there because we don't want you to get there and be like, hey, Brian and Carrie said this yeah, is great. Brian and Carrie said this was great. <laughs> okay, and then in Phuket. Now in Phuket, normally we do not stay in hotels, but in Phuket, because we were there for just about a week, we went ahead and we stayed in the hotel. It is a Wabi Sabi hotel. It is a fantastic location. It is yeah. right near the beach. We actually are on almost the top floor, so we have a little bit of a view of the water. It has been fantastic. It includes breakfast in the morning, so that's been great. And that for one week is $420. Right, and we would recommend this place. We highly recommend this place. <laughs> if you are coming to Kamala Beach, check this place out. For sure. Okay, our grocery bills, in Koh Samui, a little bit higher here. Uh, because of that transportation that we didn't have in our Airbnb, we were there for a month. Mm -hmm. So we did do our 7-Eleven runs mm -hmm. quite a bit more than we normally would have done, especially in Thailand. And our grocery bill this month, I also drank a little more beer uh, on the island. Well, we had a pool. And we had a pool, <laughs> yeah. So it came to $254. Mm -hmm. Which really for a month is still yeah, very affordable. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. And now in Phuket, Phuket, because like I said, we had our breakfast included in our hotel, so we weren't having to, because typically no matter what, we always eat breakfast in, we just buy stuff so that we have right. it. Um, it's our grocery cost, once again, we were here a week, so that wasn't very much, and it was only $35. Yeah, and the cool thing is breakfast was from, from 7 until 11. So we would eat breakfast around 10, 10, 30. That's, what our, that's kind of typical yeah, for us anyway. Push it yeah. into your lunchtime a little bit, <laughs> and then you only have to buy dinner. Well, and I, it's got, honestly kind of funny because they serve, <laughs> their majority is kind of breakfast style foods, but they also usually have some kind of what we would consider a lunch, lunch food, yeah. like curry or his pad thai or something like that. So yeah, if you kind of press the lines a little bit, so uh, we were having to, then lunch all <laughs> we were going city. out for two meals yeah. a day, it was nice. Now, entertainment, in Koh Samui, our entertainment really was, I mean, we definitely ate out a little bit. We would go into Fisherman's Village and we would you, go and have dinner at the market and we did find some places right. kind of around us to eat as well. Uh, and then it was really having beers by the beach because we had some cool <laughs> places that were down the beach from us that we would go down and have beers and stuff. And so that was really great. And that total just came to $87 for the month. Yeah, and you know, in Phuket, our entertainment was very similar. Mm -hmm. Beers on the beach. Um, that's kind of what we enjoy doing, especially when you're in Thailand. So beers on the beach in Phuket came to $75. Now, one of those nights uh, was in Penang Beach, and we probably had more beers than... I probably had more beers than I normally do, so that jacked the price up quite a bit, and you can blame Trey for that because he uh, was my drinking buddy that night. But. Yeah, and I and I think that one thing that we definitely noticed right out the gate getting into Phuket was that you were paying more. Mm -hmm. You were paying more for the food on the beach and you were also paying more for beers and drinks on the beach as well. Now you could find your bargains here and right. there, but in general, you were gonna be paying a little bit more. And you should. It's pretty nice. It is pretty nice. Yeah. Now next is transportation. And in Koh Samui, we paid a bit more. We noticed the pricing of transportation definitely yeah. went up soon as you got down and you were enjoying the beaches and the islands. So um, we used a, we took a taxi from the airport to our place. It was maybe a 10 minute ride, so it's not like it's far. We used the red trucks to get around the island, which they don't negotiate to the same level that they do in other areas right. that we noticed in the cities. Uh, so you were just in general paying a lot more money. And then once again, we used the taxi to get back to the airport and that came to $50. Yeah, those red trucks in Chiang Mai were a third of the price as they were in Koh Samui. So that gives you some kind of idea. Obviously, you're going to pay a lot more. Mm -hmm. So now in Phuket, we highly recommend you take the bus from the airport mm -hmm. to wherever you may be going on the island. Yeah, so the bus, it is called, uh, it's the Phuket Smart Bus. It's an airport bus. It runs from the airport and it runs pretty much to the far other side of the island and it stops in all the main cities. Uh, it, you know, you never know coming in how easy they are going to be to use. And it was so simple to use. And it's not just the airport bus, it's the way of transportation to get along the island to all the different beaches. And let me tell you, it's the much more affordable yeah, way of transportation. It was, it's a hundred baht per person 
And now if you're only going from one beach to the next beach and it's not very far, it's still a hundred baht. Right. But let me tell you, it's still way cheaper than those little red trucks. Now I'd like to add, earlier we mentioned that sometimes you get to the airport, you just get a cab, you grab a grab, and you get to your Airbnb, it's mm -hmm. just easier. That's what I wanted to do. Carrie said, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're taking the bus because it's so much less expensive. And she was right, once again, the bus, I would highly recommend, we would highly recommend yeah. jumping on that bus. Right. And so the bus, the one thing about it that we will say is that there is a schedule for this bus. So it doesn't start super early in the morning and it doesn't run until really <laughs> late at night. And we learned that kind of the hard way. We were hanging out with some friends. The evening went a little later than planned. And all of a sudden I looked down to see when the next bus was and it basically had just gone by. Yeah. So we got stuck taking a grab and we were talking about how expensive the grabs can be here on the island a grab from one island to the or from one little town to the next and we're talking maybe maybe three miles yeah 10 minute drive it's a 20 dollar grab ride yeah. so it's expensive when you compare that to three dollars each to hop on a bus so keep that in mind keep that in mind don't drink too late if you're if you're having to hop around a lot i mean 20 dollars one time not a huge deal but if you really wanted to be bouncing around just right. using grab you're going to have a high transportation bill okay our miscellaneous expenses down on the islands. In Koh Samui, we spent $22, mm -hmm. okay? The majority of that was mine because I got a really cool sun hat and I got this fantastic shirt for a really good price. And I only got this price because of the day that I was there bartering with the guy to get the shirt. So, uh, you know, I got a great deal. Yeah. 22 bucks yeah. for everything. Gullible. We'll just call it that, gullible. And then in that $22, I got a pair of sunglasses, just a cheap, easy pair of sunglasses to wear by the pool, so I don't have to wear my, my good ones. And then in here in Phuket, uh, we didn't spend anything on miscellaneous. There was nothing else we no. needed. No. Brian had gotten all of his gear. Well, there's all the good deals are gone. <laughs> if you like this shirt, give me a thumbs up. Hmm. We'll see. Now we needed to renew our phone data plan coming into Koh Samui and so we did that at the airport. We were smart and got it at Bangkok airport when we were transferring over and that was $22 for the month. And then while we were in Phuket, we just decided that we really weren't going to need uh, a cell phone plan for the week that we were here and we didn't want to grab another one. So there were a few times honestly that we could have used one and thankfully we had a friend that had a little uh, hot spot that we could hop onto her but uh, otherwise we didn't need it. We didn't need it. No. So now when we normally do our monthly expenses, we break down things and we give you all the costs that we spend. This one is a little bit different because it was for two and a half months. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're going to let you know the other expenses that we had in that full two and a half, two and a half month period of time. The one cost that we did have is traveling around. So we had flights that we needed to take. Yeah, and, and those flights, uh, you know, they're little hopper flights, so they're not a big deal. They still cost money. So from Bangkok up to Chiang Mai, we spent $130. Mm -hmm. After we were done in Chiang Mai, we had used up our allowed 45 days, so we actually hopped to Vietnam and then came back into Bangkok so that we could then fly to Koh Samui, which was $308. $308 from Bangkok to Koh Samui, and then we went from Koh Samui to Phuket, and that flight, which is only about 45 minutes mm -hmm. long, and you get a meal, which is, is just crazy <laughs> to me, was $208. Right. We actually flew Bangkok Airways Airlines um, from both times going out to Koh Samui and off Koh Samui because they really kind of have a monopoly on the airport there. Yeah. I don't know if they own it or what the case is, but it's the only airline you're going in and out of there. So you do pay a little bit more sometimes for that flight, but um, I would say I really it was great. It was a and great flight. I'd also like to yeah. add, because I'm sure you're going to ask, is, does that include our luggage? Mm -hmm. We did have to check our luggage. We weren't given the choice, but it was included in the price yeah. of the ticket. Their tickets just include checking your yeah. luggage. So that could also take part in in the pricing of right. it. So you don't have to worry about that. But uh, the meal was kind of a surprise to us because when we first <laughs> flew from Bangkok to Koh Samui, 
all of a sudden they started like serving some dishes and I'm like, well, we are, we're not getting a dish. I mean, like, we're in economy class, you know? We didn't pay and, extra. <laughs> yeah, we didn't yeah. pay any extra. And they served everybody and oh my God, they are on it yeah. because to be able to serve a meal on an hour flight and then a 45 minute flight coming over to Phuket. I was so excited. <laughs> he, was, he loves, he loves snacks. You. The next thing that we pay every month is our health insurance. We use Cigna Global uh, and for both of us, we pay $290 a month. That amount that we pay, because we do always kind of get asked questions about that, the price that you pay for your insurance, be it the medical plan that we have, or if it's travel insurance or anything like that, is gonna vary by so many things. A couple of them are, where are you actually traveling from? Where's your base at? Uh, what's your age? What your deductible is? Any add-ons that you wanna right. put on there and everything. So for us, we pay 290 per month. Right. Now while in Chiang Mai, we got full medical checkups. I got a colonoscopy. Everything came out great. There's a video on that, so we're not going to include the price of that in this mm -hmm. video, but you can watch that one if you're interested. Right, and that was just something that we decided to do. It was not covered by our insurance, no. but it was something that we had heard about prior to coming into, honestly, Thailand, of how easy it was to have a medical checkup here, and we were kind of intrigued by that because we don't have medical coverage that covers like just regular well checks. And so, boy, it was a quick, easy way to take care of a lot of things for a really affordable price. It was all out of pocket. Now, another cost that we have every month is our Netflix. We could easily put it into our entertainment category, but we don't. It's Netflix, it's every month. We sit, we watch our shows, we have our mm -hmm. shows we watch every night. Um, and that cost is what, $15.95? $17. $17. Yeah, and we watch Netflix quite a bit because we, we're on the road all the time. Uh, and we love the suggestions that you give us of new videos. So if you have any new ones that you know of, let us know. We don't see all of the videos, for a couple of reasons, and I'll tell you, that's kind of the next thing that we pay for. But we don't see everything show up, so sometimes we have to search for it. So yeah, leave them in the comments, different different series that you like or movies, and we, so we can check those out. Binge-worthy. Yes, binge-worthy yes. stuff. Um, now the other thing that kind of goes along with that that we do have is a VPN. And if you do not travel with a VPN, I would highly suggest having one for multiple reasons, for your banking, for safety, when you're in the airport, right. any of those kinds of things. It's just a really important element to have. And honestly, it's such a cheap thing to have. We pay $2.40 a month for the plan that we have. Right. If you're interested in looking into one, you can check the link down below in the description. And um, like I said, it's really affordable. Yeah. Now we're going to give you our final costs for each of the locations that we stayed, taking into consideration that all we're including in those is those initial costs that we gave you. We're not including those just regular monthly costs that we right. spend every month or our flights. So the first place we stopped. We stopped in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. And again, we had a great time in <laughs> Bangkok. And for a week in Bangkok, we spent $611 really wasn't bad. I mean, I don't know. I feel like that we got around the city a lot and we did a lot and went into the temples and we did yeah. everything you can do in a week mm -hmm. in Bangkok yeah, for $611. Good use of our time. Yeah. Yeah. Now in Chiang Mai for a month, we spent $1,175. Once again, we really yeah. thought that was a great amount. Um, as far as we ate out a lot. We really enjoyed that. We um, didn't have any issues with transportation or anything. Yeah, so yeah. pretty Chiang Mai. affordable. Yeah. Okay, then we get down to Island Life. We get down to Koh Samui. We do everything we do in Koh Samui for a month. And listen carefully, we spent $1,175 in Koh Samui, the same as we did in Chiang Mai. Yeah. But we did a bunch of different stuff mm -hmm. in each place. So ironically enough, it was the exact same price. So strange. And our week in Phuket, staying in a really nice hotel, was $568. So we were really happy with that as well. Yeah. Includes breakfast. He likes the breakfast. <laughs> we both do. <laughs> so our total expenses for city life in Thailand was $1,786. And our five weeks of beach life was $1,743. So almost exactly the same. Yeah, it really, I honestly, I really expected to see the pricing in for the down in the beach life to be way more. Yeah, so did I. Yeah. So we were happy with that. So I guess with that and weighing it out, you're not saving any money by staying in the cities. 
So we're going to add up the grand total for you because right mm -hmm. now I know that you're thinking about well, how much <laughs> did you spend total. So our total costs in Thailand for two and a half months was $3,529. And then per person for two and a half months, that was $1,765. So really we came in, I still feel like we saved a lot of money. We we're well below what our normal budget yeah. is. Could we have gone less in budget? Obviously we could have. We we're here, not necessarily vacationing, but there was a lot of things still that we wanted to see. So I think we were both happy with that budget. We don't feel like we uh, held back in any area. No. Now, one thing that we did do while we were in Phuket is we went on a excursion. We did not include this into the pricing at all because that is one of those variable areas that you could choose any kind of excursion yeah. that you want to do. There's a ton of them and the price range is all over the board. Right. Now, the excursion that we did, we went from, they pick us up at our hotel, we go to PP Island, we went to Maya Bay, Oh. Um, we'll go snorkeling and do kinds yeah. of all fun things. If you didn't see that video, that was video. our last video. So That's be sure really and check that video. one out. That was $150 each for yeah. that. That's so. expensive for us too. That's right. not something that we typically do, but we're in Thailand. We figured we got to do it. There were some key places we knew yeah. we wanted to see, and that was one easy way to do it. So after this, we are headed, headed to Malaysia and very excited yeah. to go and explore another country and we hope you come along with us so make sure and hit the subscribe button so you can follow. And if you like my shirt, give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> All right, cheers. cheers.